Hi, this is Leif. I'm here to talk about Epicus. And the first song that we hear is obviously Solitude. I'm sitting here alone in darkness waiting to be free. Lonely and forlorn I am crying. I long for my time to come. Death means death life. Please let me die in solitude. If you ask me, this is Kahneman's signature song, the song that defines us. If you should play one song for a person that never heard the band before, this is it. And like other genre-defining bands like Motorhead, Iron Maiden, Metallica, Black Sabbath and Pentagram, etc. After just a couple of seconds, you, you hear it's us. A lot of people have also said that this is a track they would like to be played at a funeral. Personally, I don't know about that, but I guess it's an honor anyway if to say this. Speaking about death and funerals, not one but two people have told me that a person very close to them have taken the car out to the woods and shot his head off while listening to Canmas and Solitude. Not exactly the stuff you want to hear on a night out with your friends. Thanks mate, thanks for telling me. Another beer please. Okay, here's the chorus coming up, a chorus inspired by Venom's Buried Alive. You remember the the intro with the priest and stuff. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But it was close that solitude never happened. I was writing on another song that later would become Samarithan, but our drummer hated the riff, called it too simple and childish. So I had to come up with something else, and that was solitude. To be honest, I wasn't sure solitude was a hit or should be the opening track on the album. I wanted the opener to be Demon's Gate instead. But it was a drummer again that insisted on solitude. I guess he was right. It was and is the perfect start for Epicus Doomicus Metallicus. In the 80s we often played solitude early in the set. Today it is the only really suitable end to a Canemas show. People sing their throats off and every hand is in the air. At Vakin last summer it was fucking magic. 30,000 people were singing and shouting and cheering and we had goosebumps. A moment I would never forget. In the best Doom song lists, Solitude is always number one. Oh, 
This is probably my favorite track on Epicus. I love the long intro, the chords that I worked on for weeks and weeks. They were great with the drums and build up to the evil negative riff that is Demon's Gate. And also perhaps the best track on the album. If you ask me anyway. Mm, I really like the riff. It's complex, almost sounds like it's played backwards and the drums are just perfect with the hi-hat beat and it leads into the verse that Johan sings in its, in its characteristic way. To hear his voice on this track always sends chills down my spine. Okay, here it comes. First verse. is an E but what note to land on? After trying all the notes in the alphabet I went for a D. Well, in our tuning of course. In Canamas we don't care about our tuning. If it's the fifth fret on the A string it's a D. It doesn't matter if you tune in C, B, E or A. The fifth fret on the A string is always a D. Okay, here's the chorus, Approach the Eyeborn, obviously inspired by Fulci's masterpiece The Beyond. The entire band loved the film, so I had to write a song based on it. Europe did Seven Doors Hotel, and I did Demon's Gate. On the back cover of the album you can see Eric Larnoy's painting, and if you haven't already guessed it, it's a painting based on Demon's Gate. I hate it when I first saw it, but over the years I have grown, well, used to it. Hmm, too much pink. We really dug Eric Larnoy's paintings for Manila Roads, Open the Gates and the Deluge and wanted one for ourselves. 
That's one of the reasons we sent a tape to Black Dragon to begin with. And of course we were huge fans of Manila Rhodes music. So, a year earlier in 1985, the first Canvas demo was sent to Paris to Black Dragon Records. It was Crystal Ball, Into the Unfathom Tower, A Sorcerer's Pledge and Warchild. The Frenchies loved it, but wanted to hear more. So, we went into the studio again. This time to record two new songs, Demon's Gate and Blackstone Wielder. They thought the tracks were amazing and offered us a deal. And this is, by the way, Klaus Bergvall on guitar. We didn't have a lead gu guitar player at the time, so Klaus helped us out. Did a fine job, I think. We had tried lots and lots of people, but either we didn't like them or they didn't like us. I went to Klaus' house a couple of times before the recording to work with him on the solos, and uh, I liked the result. And of course we asked Klaus to join the band several times, but um, he had his own band, a band called Arrow. And I actually met Klaus at the recent anniversary show in Stockholm, and he looked pretty much the same. It was good to see him again. Mmm, this is Mats Ekström's big moment here. Boy, he worked on those fills and rolls, but this sound just great. Also, Mats is of course responsible for the level of the drums in the mix. We lowered them when he wasn't around or turned his back. But still, some of the loudest drums I have ever heard on a record. Mats was a close friend, but he couldn't be in the band because of his job. He couldn't rehearse that much and he couldn't tour. Too bad. He was a really good drummer. Oh, Crystal Ball, I was expecting Under the Oak. There you go. A song written in 1984, I think. First with me on vocals, but on Epicus with Joanne Lenquist. <laughs> Joan was never a member of Canemas, I'm afraid. He had his own band, Jonah Hex, after a character in a western book or a comic. I had heard of the band, but 
Both Cannabis and Jonah Hex were from the northern suburbs of Stockholm. I didn't know them, but apparently our drummer Mats did. He was from the same place, Jakobsberg. So one day, I think it was just a week or so before the recording of Epicus, and we haven't found a singer. It was totally impossible. So Mats came to the rehearsal room with his tape Johan was singing, and we loved his voice. But Mats made it very clear from the beginning that Johan would not join Canemars. A shame, but what could you do? To me and to the rest of the band, including Mats Ekström, it was a big problem. If you sang on the album, you should be a full-time member of the band. I remember us bitching about this for days until we didn't have a choice anymore. I didn't want to sing on the album, we needed a singer, so uh, we had no choice. And we went for a session singer, Johan. I love his singing on Epicus, his voice suits the song so well. We asked him many times to join the band, we begged him, but I don't think, think he liked the music so much. Jonah Hex was more melodic hard rock, the style that Johan preferred. I actually saw Johan a couple of times in the late 80s, early 90s. He was driving a cab at night and picked me up outside different clubs in Stockholm. I think we spoke about the album and what he was doing, but it, it's uh, kind of blurry actually. I'm very happy that we can do these anniversary gigs with him though. I really like the guy and he still sings like a motherfucker. The anniversary show at the Baser in Stockholm December 18 was a total blast. Saturday night, totally sold out. A lot of people couldn't even get in. Robert Lowe did a great job and Joanne, he totally blew the roof off the place. Fucking hell, it was almost like the time had been standing still since we recorded that album in that little studio 25 years ago. This is Klaus Barry Wallagan, a nice solo. We really worked on the different parts in it and it floats rather well I think. I don't remember what inspired the lyrics. But I have a vague memory of reading The Lord of the Rings. And it could be about Lord Saruman and the Palantirs. But I'm not 100% sure about that. <laughs> that counting in Swedish. When we toured with the guys in King Diamond, they told me that they had bought the album 
thought it was absolutely amazing and that we must be from America until they heard the count in, in Swedish. They told me they almost fell backwards. What the fuck? Are these guys Swedish? Can't believe it! And this is the reason we got our first tour. Messiah phoned King up one evening, you know, got hold of King's number in Copenhagen from a friend's friend. The King answered and when Messiah started he sings in Canemas and could we be on the upcoming King Diamond tour in Scandinavia? The King said, yeah, sure. He had actually heard Epicus, loved the stuff and offered us to open up for them on the spot. Incredible. To this day, I'm very thankful to King and Andy. Without their support in those early days, we might not be the famous band Canemas. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Okay, this is my song, my version of the three wise men and what they were looking for. I worked on the lyrics and music a lot and almost drove my girlfriend at the time crazy. A lot of sleepless nights. We had about $2,000 to spend on the recording and mixing of Epicus, and we chose Thunderload Studios in Stockholm. My friend Inge Malmsten recorded a demo there, and so did my earlier band Trilogy. We couldn't afford a better studio, but it worked out fine. Ragnar did a good job in Thunderload, and uh, so did we. And uh, here comes the chorus. Ah, this part, the solemn part. So difficult to play it without fucking up. It's just a whole lot of notes that somebody mixed in a bag and dropped on the floor. We always fuck up on this part. Canemas music consists of notes, but they come in logical order, I think. Here it's no logic, no sense, no order, just a bunch of random notes. A fucking miracle we could play it in Thunderload. And as if Glens over Sjö or Strand wasn't enough. It was bloody cold in the studio. We had to wear long johns and glove in the recording room because the studio was placed below the subway at Universitetet in Stockholm and we were there in the middle of the winter. Frost came out when we were speaking and breathing and the recording room was so damp. It was almost impossible to play your guitar or bass or drums. Room was okay though. Rang the Valquist from Heavy Load. He had heaters there and he sat behind the mixing desks. Two 16 channel uh, Hogstrom PA desks linked together. And sometimes during extra long studio hours, he took his very tight pants off and sat there mixing in long johns and cowboy boots. Quite a sight. You had to pee in a red bucket in a corner and sometimes we had to wait for the subway train to pass before we could continue working with the overdubs, like on Solitude. And when we were sitting in the mixing room, you could hear the band in the room next door practicing. And they always played Beast of Burden. So fucking annoying. Anyway, 
This song is maybe the Dark Horse or the odd one on Epicus, but I like it and uh, it sounded incredible when we played it live with Joan at the anniversary party. Great stuff. Under the Oak, my other favorite song from Epicus, a song that originally was named in the shadow of the cross. I worked on the verse quite a bit and eventually it became Under the Oak. No cannabis in our history, this is part 4 of Taste of Creation, a saga about the origin of life that I started to write in 1984 and finished five years later when we recorded that album. I love Mappy's guitar sound here. I think he used his old white BC Rich and it was plugged into Ragnar's old Marshall amps. He had tons of those, white, grey, red, amps and cabinets that collected dust everywhere in the studio. He also had orange stacks and high watts. The Thunderload was a goldmine if you were after that warm, vintage sound of the 70s. Mappy uh, stereo dubbed his guitar with a bit of chorus and uh, that's it. A raw and crunchy but warm guitar tone. Perfect for Canamas. I don't remember much from these recordings, I must admit. But I think I used an old uh, home-built brown Thunderbird bass that I later painted black. 
and I think I lined it straight into the desk. I can't say for sure, but I'm almost certain that was the case. Exactly how I do it even today. I like this part, the way Johan sings it. Wonderful, so much feeling in Johan singing here. And when he hits these high notes, goosebumps. The guy is such a good singer. This is pure, this, oh, I can't speak. This is pure magic. And more is coming. Right now. Here the energy is on top. We're building it up for the chorus. Here it comes. I'm okay with a re-recording of this song on Taser Creation, but this version is so much better. I know a lot of people have this track as their favorite from Epicus. I think that's a really good choice. This is actually Joan sound checking his microphone. But we kept it. It sounds cool and it fits the song, I think. I was standing next to him to guide him through the songs. Joan had been listening to the songs only for a week or so and uh, he wasn't 100% sure about how to sing it. With that in mind, his performance on Epicus is even more admirable. 
And the keyboard you hear in the beginning of the song, we borrowed it from a friend from high school. He couldn't really play on it, but told everybody he was the king of keyboard. But in the studio later, it was, it was clear he didn't know what he was doing, so... Uh, I think it was me and Rang and maybe Matt Ekström who played it on the album. Originally we wanted more keys, you know, proper chords, but had to settle for the one finger waltz instead. It works, but it sounds just a little bit too amateurish. We wanted this big epic sound landscape here in the beginning of Sorcerer's Pledge. It's such a big song, so I guess we thought a 12-string guitar wasn't enough. But it is. We did it exactly like this at the anniversary show in Stockholm, and it sounded just great. Sometimes less is more. And you should never drench a good song with too many instruments and overdubs. But sometimes you can save a bad song like that. I guess. A thousand years of midnight, the sunrise is This part right here always gets the crowd going. Nowadays we often play it last in the set and the crowd always go crazy here. I remember when we played Saucer's Pledge at Wacken in 2002, the summer of doom. I saw an ocean of people getting nuts. It was just getting dark and from the stage you could see hordes of people that came from the other stages to see us an incredible memory. This song is about a mad old sorcerer that thinks he can extend his life by drinking young virgin's blood. To me, he's like a cross between Dr. Frankenstein, Dracula and the Wizard Merlin. Ah, this is good groove. Mats Ekstrom had huge problems with his drum playing and Thunderload. The Heavy Load brothers Rang and Styrbjorn were recording songs themselves, so they didn't want to move the microphone from Styrbjorn's drum kit over to Mats Ekstrom's drum kit. So in the end Mats had to play on Styrbjorn's drums, which uh, wasn't very easy to do. Mats was uh, hitting his drums very hard, you see, so Rang ordered him not to hit Styrbjorn's drums so hard. Afraid Mats was gonna break something. So uh, Mats couldn't hit the drums like the way he wanted and was used to. They also had steel wire protection around the microphones on Sturbion's drum kit, so Mats also had a very limited space to hit on. Which made his playing even more difficult.
Joe one really was on fire here. And here we have more toy keyboards. Yay. I mean, the album is far from perfect. The playing could definitely have been better. And you can hear that it is a first album. But somehow we captured something these weeks we spent in Thunderload in the beginning of 1986. Exactly 25 years ago. We didn't know what we were doing and our mates in Upland Svesby hated our music. Kiss, UFO, Thin Lizzy were in fashion. But our music was based on bands like Black Sabbath, Trouble, Angel Witch, Venom, Anvil, Accept, Pentagram, Motorhead and Iron Maiden. We were metalheads and wanted our music to be slow, hard and heavy. Mats Ekström came up with the tag Epic Doom Metal something that later turned into Epicus Doomicus Metallicus. A perfect name for the beast that was our first album. Some people laughed at it, some critics gave, it, gave us bad reviews, but we really didn't care. We didn't really care about that. We knew we had made a fantastic album and I still remember the feeling when I collected the box with the vinyl from the post office. I was blown away. My first record. A dream had come true. I still have that box and I still live the dream. And I'm very, very proud of being a part of Canon Mass today. I'm also extremely proud of the fact that a bunch of 20 year old metalheads from the suburbs of Stockholm could do an album like Epicus Doomicus Metallicus. Hmm, I love this album. <laughs> 